Hello everyone, I'm Frank Payne. Thank you for joining me with my very first YouTube video. Um, if, if you do know me, you probably know me from Facebook. I have, I've had my own Facebook page called Living Art by Frank Payne for a number of years now. Before that, I was active on a lot of the internet forums, like cam forums, chameleon forums, uh, b before Facebook really blew up as like the, the, the hub of all things reptile and amphibian. Um, this first video is gonna be just me telling you a little bit about myself. Uh, about some of my main projects that I'm working with um, and what I think about for the future of this YouTube channel because I do have a lot of things I want to share with you. I have a lot of really good ideas I think for what uh, we're going to be doing together in the future but mostly this is about me sharing my experience over the past 25 years of working with many species of reptiles and amphibians um, and sharing what I've learned over that time and if we, we can learn together because I'm always figuring out new things. I'm learning from other hobbyists. Um, every, every day it seems I'm learning something new and about the only thing that I'm uh, as equally passionate about as keeping reptiles is talking about them. I love to talk about them and share what I know and what I'm figuring out as time goes on. So thank you for joining me and welcome to Living Art. I'm Frank Payne, biology teacher, reptile breeder, and former zookeeper. I'm here to share with you my passion and experience working with these beautiful and fascinating animals. Welcome to Living Art. All right guys, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of my main projects, the things that I'm most passionate about, the things I'm devoting most of my space and time to. And the first place that I need to start with is the, the species that really kind of catapulted me into doing this on a larger scale. Because like so many of us, of hobbyists, is I started with like kind of like a little bit of everything. I did this, I did that, and just kind of kept them more like pets. Um, bred a few things here and there, but nothing like dealing with like many pairs altogether. Um, but it was the electric blue gecko, Ligodactylus Williams size, is definitely the species that really got me going like, okay, like what I'm most passionate about is working with a handful of species and becoming as good as possible about caring for them and about actually spreading them out to the hobby at large, both in terms of breeding them in numbers, but also in terms of information. Um, and so this was a species that I, I just fell in love with the, absolute, the first second that I saw them and I, I knew I had to have them and then I started with one pair and then two and then three and now I'm working with um, 13 pairs of many different distinct lineages of Lycodactylus Williamsi. And for this particular species I find it so important because um, they are a critically endangered species in the wild. They are CITES-1, which means they cannot be traded internationally anymore. Basically, what we have of these animals in the United States is all that's ever going to be here legally. All right? They cannot come in legally, and they cannot leave legally. So we really have to be very excellent stewards of this species, of what we have. We do have a decent amount of them in captivity, and we do have um, the knowledge now at this point to produce them quite well. Um, and, and I've got it down pretty well. I'm, I'm very happy with what I'm doing with them. There's always more to learn. I'm always tweaking my husbandry. Um, but we are at a point now where we can really make this species blow up in the hobby. And I really hope that more people join me and not just keeping them as displays. And they are like amazing displays. They're beautiful, gorgeous animals. I go, but they, they, we really need more people breeding them on a, on a slightly larger scale. Because I have 13 pairs. And from those 13 pairs, hundreds of babies can come in a single year. Um, so if we just have a couple more people doing like four or five pairs or something like that, we could really get this species to take off and make sure that they stay established in the hobby. Um, what you see beside me here is, is most of my William side, my adults anyway. I have baby racks on the other side that I'll show you at some other point. But most of these cages that you see here, these PVC enclosures or terrariums, whatever you want to call them, are filled with Lycodactylus William side, the electric blue gecko. I have a bunch of different pairs in here. I'll, I'll try and I'll, I'll try and cut in some other clips of what it actually looks like in there. Um, and one of the things that I do plan to do moving forward is to have dedicated episodes to species. And probably this is going to be the species that I start with. Where I'm going to show you and tell you uh, what I do with them to try and teach you and, and share what I figured out working with them over the years. Um, so. This is definitely like my main project right now. It's like that goes away. All right. So one of my other main projects are northern blue tongue skinks. I've been working with northern blue tongue skinks actually longer than any other species. It's my very first like pet reptile like that I took seriously in a way. Uh, when I was 12 years old, it was a northern blue tongue skink that lived for about 25 years or a little bit less than that before he passed away finally. 
Uh, but I've always kept and bred Northern Blue Tongue skinks since I was a young kid. Uh, and they still remain one of my main passion projects. Um, these days I am working on a lot of the selective breeding of particular colors for this species. Uh, so for instance, this guy that you see right here is, is one of the best blacks that I've ever produced, probably the, the best black that I've ever produced. So what this is, this is a true northern blue tongue skink. It's not a hybrid, it's not one of the wild caught like New Guinea species or Indonesian species that you would find. This is a, a true Australian uh, northern blue tongue skink, but this looks nothing like what you would see in the wild of Australia. This is something that's been selectively bred for multiple generations by myself, by other hobbyists to get to this point. And this is one of the main things I'm gonna to continue to push forward is the selective breeding for certain traits uh, while maintaining health and vigor of these northern blue tongue skinks. So here is, is the best black one that I've ever produced. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous animal, almost all black. And what's, what's amazing about this particular line is that the blackness increases as they get older. So this animal, believe it or not, will probably get blacker and will look nicer as it continues to age. And then this guy who's perching on my shoulder here is the nicest lighter colored. You, gotta, you can see the contrast on these two, it's absolutely gorgeous. So this is uh, from my lightest pair that I was able to produce. This is the nicest of my light colored ones, beautiful white and, and red, and even if it may not show up on the camera here, but even green tones on the top of it. So these are probably my two favorite Northerns that I produced this year, but I did produce about 100 of them. Uh, and I kept 11 for myself, uh, the 11 ones that I thought were the best of oranges and whites and blacks. And so I will go into those more in future videos as well. But man, you just, you can't beat a blue tongue skink for a beautiful and just friendly and intelligent pet reptile. All right guys, the next species to go, that we're gonna look at is the small yet beautiful carpet chameleon, a Fursifer lateralis. Chameleons have always been the group of lizards that I've been most fascinated by my entire life. They have some of the most bizarre attributes of all reptiles as well as some of the most, if not the most beautiful colors of all reptiles. And this species here, the carpet chameleon, is my favorite species of chameleon. Of all the species of chameleon that I've worked with, these guys have held my interest the longest. I have both a young adult male and female pair here. The male right here is kind of aqua and blue right now. A little fired up, but not too much at all. He's showing off a little bit for the female, but not much. The female, on the other hand, is absolutely stunning. She is a gravid female. She did mate with this male not that long ago. And the coloration that she's showing right now is saying, I am gravid, leave me alone. And he's not fired up too much because of that. He's not going after, he knows those colors. And it's easy to see why I love this species so much. Just absolutely gorgeous little animals. And what's really great about them is the fact that they are small. These are adult animals. They don't really get much bigger than this. So they're very manageable for somebody that wants a chameleon, um, but doesn't want a huge cage like is needed for a panther or a veiled chameleon. Carpet chameleons are, are the absolute best in my opinion. As captive bred, um, they are quite hardy as far as, at least as far as chameleons go. Um, I do work with another species of chameleon, the minor or lesser chameleon, first if minor. Uh, I won't show any of those right now, but I will show you those in future videos. But these guys right here are my absolute favorite chameleon. It's, I think it's pretty easy to see why. Just look at these beautiful little animals. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this up. First off, I wanna say thank you very much for joining me on my first YouTube video. I really appreciate it. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and learned a little bit and hopefully are excited for future videos. Uh, speaking of the future, what I envision for this channel is to kind of take deep dives into the species that I'm working with, um, like the electric blue gecko, like northern blue tongue skinks, like carpet chameleons, um, and kind of have like video care sheets show you exactly what I do with them, uh, what I found to work, what I found not to work, and just share with you everything I've learned so that you can recreate it at home and so that we can have more people successful with these amazing species. Um, eventually I do want to also kind of branch out and get into other people's facilities and see what makes them successful see all the interesting animals that they're working with um, also as a former zookeeper I do have some contacts in the zoo field and I do hope that eventually uh, I'll be able to get myself and bring us into zoos and aquariums and see the good work that they're doing there because there's some really really great stuff out there that I know that you guys would love to see 
Um, I think that next week or next time, it may, not, it may not be next week, uh, but next time I think we're going to focus on the electric blue gecko, Ligodactylus williamsi, and then we'll just go from there, you know, species by species. Um, what I do want you guys to do is to comment in this video and let me know well, what do you want to see? Is there, things, is there questions that you have? Is there things in my collection that you'd like to see me focus on? You know, this is for you. All right, so just let me know what you need, what you want to see from me, and I'll try and help out with that. Um, and speaking of that, uh, make sure that you also do like and subscribe to this channel. This is brand new. In order for this to have any sort of success and legs, I'm gonna need people uh, to support it. And it's as simple as just liking it, subscribing to my channel, and sharing it wherever you are on Facebook, on Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, and I can't wait until the next time. Cheers. Uh -huh.